I thought because it was a really nice evening, I would take you guys and show you what's growing in the garden. So let's take a look. So you'll probably notice the biggest change since you've last seen the garden are the collard greens. And, oh, and the lettuce planted there. But um, the collard greens, we harvested all of our collard greens. And the reason we had to do that is because they were bolting. And when they bolt like this, they get kind of bitter. And they're not super, they're not super tasty. So it's kind of nice to get all of them. You want them while they're the tastiest. So I did leave the ones here where they were, um, where they hadn't bolted yet. But all these ones where they've bolted... I'm gonna let them go because that's them going to seed and they'll probably they'll be like in little bean pods right there so the little seeds will form in those bean pods and wait for those to dry and then you can harvest the seed you can collect the seed and grow more lovely collards i did notice that the ones that bolted quicker were the sweeter ones that had a more vertical growth pattern and those were the top bunching early and then the ones that didn't bolt as quickly and still have yet to bolt are the Georgia Southern collards. A couple of them did bolt, but um, most all of my uh, top bunching earlies bolted. So that was that was interesting. So then over here, I have a big blank space where I had some lettuce seed that washed away. But down here, we have some romaine lettuce planted, which that looks really good, really green, super healthy. And then over here, this thing, so originally, the reason we put up this fence, and, I've, and I think I've said this before, but we had an armadillo issue. And these two rows here were originally cabbage. This one was Brussels sprouts. This one was collards. He left those alone. And then we had cauliflower and broccoli. I didn't get any broccoli except for those two weird things that flowered right away. They never, they never formed a head, so that was weird. So I just left those to do their thing. Uh, I got no cauliflower, but I did, out of all of that, I managed to get one gorgeous um, looking Brussels sprout. And if I get down there, you can really see the uh, little, the little Brussels sprouts forming in like the armpits of the plant. So that looks really cool. So that'll be interesting to see what that's like. So I thought at first it may, might be a cabbage, but it's definitely a Brussels sprout. And then I had, we had a random freeze happen, um, I can't remember, a couple, maybe like three weeks ago, or something like that, and, um, we had cabbage here, and the cabbage fried, it totally fried the cabbage, and then I planted just some carrots in here, and I'll kind of get down, because you can see them, so these are the carrots that have germinated, if it'll focus, let me see if I can find a bigger one, here's one, here are the carrots, and... They're coming in, and we'll see what they do. They are directly planted in ground, so they might get too compacted, but I'll just leave them and see what happens. I got quite a few coming up in here, so I'll just leave them, see what they do. And I have quite a few. I have quite a few down here. And those are right next to some broccoli, which did survive the freeze, but I did lose two to mockingbirds. Mockingbirds came and nipped off two of them while they were still real small but hopefully we'll get some broccoli from that so then directly across from it i have a small blank space kind of like how i have that blank space where the cabbage died down here i had spinach seed that never came up so i got that blank space but the rest of the way down i have onions and i bought we bought onion sets this year and we bought sweet white yellow and red onions so these are all the red onions i ran out of room in the raised bed so i just put what i had left over right here and they're doing pretty good and then stepping over this way we have our strawberries but on the other side that's where the rest of my onions and garlic are but these are here are the strawberries this variety is called um ever sweet that's my favorite to be honest and they're doing really well and i just picked two pounds almost three about two pounds 11 ounces today so that was really exciting but there's still some on there that I left so they could get a little bit redder and they spill over into this box and then halfway through the box and you can really change tell the change between the greenery but this one here is called sure crop and this one I would say that this one has a more up kind of like when you traditionally see strawberries they kind of the upper leaves kind of rise above and then the berries form underneath the leaves I feel like these ones kind of have a more flat low shape to them and they just kind of like they're not as tall and bushy they're a much smaller plant uh, the leaves are smaller um, but it is darker green and they have more of a um a more sour tart 
flavor and their flavor is a lot more strong so it's a much stronger flavor so that's really good if you're trying to like kind of flavor a drink with strawberry these ones are really good to use as opposed to the ever sweet right there but um they're both good i really like them and then over here this is the last bet i had to weed out and i haven't done it yet but this is the chandler and these have the biggest berries on them they're kind of like a good cross between those two this one here is and then i had a bunch of blank space and we just ended up taking runners that formed from the ever sweets and putting them over here and it's got a lot of berries on it it's got a lot of berries on it, so that's exciting. And I left these ones to get a little redder because I felt like, and it's crazy how much red, how red they get throughout the day because um, when I was out here picking this morning, it didn't seem like they were, didn't seem like they were that red. But, yeah. Over on this other half, I kind of left this half empty because I kind of figured um, our time for things like, um, be, uh, not beets, radishes is kind of over at this point because it's too warm and they'll be really spicy. So I don't think I'll plant radishes in this bed. I mean, I could, I don't know. But these shoots send off so many runners that I'll probably end up putting runners in this bed is probably what I will end up doing with this other half of bed. Maybe I'll plant something. Honestly, don't know. <laughs> Now over here, this is the last raised bed that I have, and I have garlic on one side and I have onions on the other. Now the funny thing is, is that you can very easily tell them apart because the garlic has a super flat leaf. So like if you've ever grown like, um, oh, I don't know, like if you've grown uh, daylilies or something like that, it's got that very same shape like that, and they're very flat leaves. And it kind of reminds me, I used to have a Vanda orchid, and that's kind of the way that it grew. And then you can see that the onions have a much different, a much different shape to them. And their leaves, whoops, and their leaves are like circular all the way around. So I, I don't know if there's like a good side-by-side -side comparison. Here's a garlic. There's an onion. And these leaves are very flat, the garlic leaves, and then the um, onion rings are super round. So anyways, there you go, I have them planted side by side. And this one I think, I believe, is like white onions, maybe some yellow onions. And I did manage to fit about 150 or 125 onions in this bed, I was really surprised. And then I don't know how much garlic is in here. I know I have three rows, but I don't know whether or not it's a soft neck, soft neck or a hard neck variety. We'll just cross that bridge when we get to it. I'm, I'm just not sure. I can't remember. So that's what's in this bed. Over here, I planted some peas. Now these are sugar snap peas and I planted them and they did get nipped by the frost a little bit, but they seem to be recovering okay. I do see some aphids right here. Yeah, I do see some aphids. But um, I planted them all the way along this fence line. And I don't know. I'm kind of disappointed. I wish I had a higher germination rate. But at this point, I can't really, I can't really do anything about it. But um, they're doing pretty well, all things considered. And um, hopefully, they'll do better next year. They're just kind of sparsely. I didn't soak them, and I wondered if I should have um, because I was... I saw someone online soaking them, and I was kind of wondering about that, but um, I'm going to try again. My plan is to try again this fall and plant up a bunch of peas this fall, and I want to start them indoors, um, yeah, and just see what they see what they do. So that is pretty much everything going on in the garden right now, except for all of this that I have to plant. Um, I need to plant like black eyed peas, bush beans, things like that. So I need to get these rows amended, get stuff planted, get her done. So, um, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I really do appreciate you guys taking time out of your busy day to spend it with me. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you guys later. Bye.